What's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming back to the channel today. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about getting nice wide guitars for your mixes. Uh, from simple to a little more complex, but still all starter, all beginner, uh, easy for everyone to do ideas. So you'll see here I've built a track. Um, it's just a couple of bars. I opened the SoCal drum kit and Logic programmed a simple drum beat. Uh, threw a little bass line down this literally F G A C sounds like this. Easy enough. So now we're going to throw some guitar on there. We will go to Guitar Rig 5 by Native Instruments. If you don't have it if, and you don't have a way to record your amp or whatever, killer guitar plug-in for any style of music hard rock classic rock country uh, church worship stuff it's got it all so we'll go to styles country and we will grab let's do this twang crunchy here we'll turn the delay that's built into it off so we have this we have this <laughs> Now, something I'll always do on my guitar channels is throw an EQ at the top and roll some of the mud out of the, out of the mix. Uh, you may not even notice the difference now, but I promise you, if you have a production that's got multiple guitars stacked up, that low-end information, that rumble can really build up. Uh, so just dial that in according to your ears, but this is always a good starting spot for me. So what we're going to do is record just a simple chuggy guitar part that matches what the bass is doing. For a verse or something, that may be all you want, all you want for your for your song. Uh, if you do want it to sound wider, there's a couple ways with just this track we can make that happen. Uh, the first and the easiest is in your DAW. Uh, most of them will have something like this. It's called a sample delay. We'll grab it, throw it on this guitar track. If you're not familiar with what this is, basically if you look here, this is the left speaker or the left side. This is the right side. If we're zeroed out, that means the sound of my guitar that I just recorded is coming out of the speaker in real time, in the time it should. Now, if we roll this up, these numbers are by milliseconds. Uh, if I roll it up to here, now it means my guitar sound is coming out of the right side of the headphones or the speaker or whatever, 300 milliseconds later, than the left side. So now it sounds like there's a guitar playing on the left and the right, but they're exactly the same part still. So I'll turn it off, play a little bit soloed, and then I'll turn it on. And especially on headphones or in a car or, you know, nice speakers, you're going to hear it. Probably even on a laptop or a phone, you're going to notice the difference. So here we go. Super cool tool. Um, usually if I'm doing electric guitars, I'll take the time to go ahead and do what we're going to do in a minute and track more. Uh, but sometimes I've got an acoustic part. Uh, if it's kind of a country rock song that is underneath a few electric guitars and just adding some nice texture, but I want it to be wider, this is a great answer for that. Or if you just have one track of electric and you don't want to retrack, or maybe you got a song from someone else, and this is the way you can work with that. Now, if you don't have a sample delay and you want to do this effect, you can do it manually as well. We'll duplicate this exact track. We'll grab this file and we'll copy it down. So now I have the exact same thing playing on both tracks and we will pan one left and one right. Now, right now, it sounds exactly the same, but what I can do 
is manually go in here and do what the sample delay was doing and push my pan right channel a little bit behind. So I get the same effect. Uh, so that's a cool workaround of that. Once you, once you have your whole part recorded, then grab it, copy it down, slide it a little bit behind and uh, works great. Now what I would normally do is maybe I will leave only that part on the left and record a completely different, like higher up part or whatever on the right for a quick demo. Uh, if this is a song I'm going to take into production and do more and more work to, uh, I probably would play that exact same part again on the right side and it sound like this. The idea here is to play as close as you can to the same part because you want it to sound like one guitar track that just sounds wide but the truth of the matter is is we're human and you're not going to play dead on exactly the same so those variances are actually going to work to your advantage and spread that sound out so we'll solo that up And then what I might do here is create another track. Uh, so maybe I'll go to ambient. This clean cave is cool. For this, I am going to turn the delays off. We'll turn the verb down a little. Like that patches like this if you want them a little more rock a little more driven without having to go into the amp and everything you can go up here at the top add this gain booster and so far this has worked on any patch I've used in this software and you can hear like now I'm pretty clean now if I push this up a little it starts to get a little dirty I'm doing something lead, I can really crank it up. So super cool. Uh, we'll leave it about right there. And I will grab one of my favorites in Logic, the stereo delay. And uh, as I typically do, roll off the high and low end. Turn it up a little. Turn my feedback up. If you don't know what that is, that's how many times it repeats. So this is my right side. That's pretty good. So then maybe we'll throw just a, a simple melodic line over the top of this. Maybe I want to build an energy, but not have a lead line, you know, conflicting with the vocals or whatever. Uh, I'll keep that chop on the left side, then on the right side, maybe just open up some chords. And uh, I definitely want to catch that bend, that little dissonant thing. I think it's cool. And catching it together will really make it jump out of the mix. So something like this. That's cool. Maybe it's a part of the song. I still want a little more guitar energy, uh, but I don't want to play something all over a pie that conflicts with the vocal melody. Uh, a great thing I could do is just a percussive, uh, something like this. Throw some delay on it. Uh, maybe a, maybe a do 
dotted eight. No, maybe not a dotted eight. Uh, quarter notes on one side, eighth notes on the other. So you can see, even though I'm playing a guitar sound that's centered in the mix, the delay is still kicking it left and right, so that's cool. like that uh, it's not gritty enough so we'll go in here and throw that gain booster on Last thing I'll add in is just adding some ambience underneath your main guitar parts. Um, maybe it's part of the song, let's say this is chorus one, like we have it here, and now it's chorus two, or it's a turnaround after the chorus and you want the energy of the song to keep moving up a little bit, but you don't want to move these to uh, new guitar parts. You want to keep this progression happening. So maybe you add a really subtle ambient guitar underneath it that adds a little melody not line, but it's not, you know, like a hook or anything. Um, something like this. with that I did switch to the neck pickup to warm it up a little bit um, I will say that I like the high part the really high strung part uh, but I think it pokes out too much so I in this case I would probably double it lower Solo those, just get them nice and blended together. Check them in the mix. I'm digging that. This actually may end up turning into something at some point. Uh, a little freebie at the end here, if you work on your own demos, uh, a really quick way to get, not a mastered sound, but something that has the volume of a mastered track. A few things you can do without a ton of extra plugins. Uh, first thing I usually do is go up here and much like the guitar, I will do a tighter curve. I just want to roll out the really low stuff. I will usually go up here and throw a little what I call sparkle on top because people are used to hearing uh, on the radio and stuff really shimmery, uh, sparkly mixes. So this usually seems to help sell a song. I will always grab a compressor. There are plenty of good stock ones in Logic. I just love this uh, Waves H comp. Uh, the mastering one here is great. Just dial it in till it knocks like 3, 4 uh, dB. On good speakers around 3, you can really hear it start to glue everything together. So that's awesome. Then the last thing you want to do is grab a limiter. L1 is great. Again, we'll just go to the mastering preset. And what this is going to do is um, 
pull my volume up to where it matches everything that you're gonna hear on Spotify or whatever. Cause right now I'm a little bit quiet. You can see my master meter here. I'm about negative six and I wanna get it up pretty close to zero. So we'll pull this threshold down till I see this beginning to respond. now instead of negative 6 dB I'm 0.2 under zero so that's right at zero so here's what we got so there you go hope you found this inspirational and helpful in some way on uh, just a few simple tips and tricks to uh, make your guitar production uh, sound bigger and wider in your mix and it'll really take your stuff from beginner amateur sounding to professional if you have tips that i haven't mentioned yet drop them in the comments below and maybe we'll do a video on those next time god bless you guys as always keep making great music <laughs>